Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Muhammad Nizami with another continuing with lectures on design and 3D modeling of RF and macro devices. We have covered so far in my playlist, you can down there check and uh, see it. We have covered uh, waveguide to microstrip and other various transmission line transitions. We have covered um, uh, ortho mode, uh, transducers, OTMs, and polarizer. And we have uh, covered other um, things that you can see there. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a series, I'm gonna start talking about a series of filter designs. Now, I'm not gonna cover some of the standard filters that a lot of you are aware of. And um, so there's plenty of videos and articles. So I'm, I just selected few types of filters that are, um, that are not widely commonly known and uh, yet they have features that are unique and uh, very impressive in performance. So today <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about uh, a suspended line, um, uh, suspended uh, micro, uh, I mean, strip line filters. And these are a class of filters. They're similar to strip filter, micro strip line filters, except they're suspended, meaning that they don't have the substrate is, is really the, the copper pattern of the filter is um, suspended. Uh, with little support from a very thin uh, substrate without a ground plane. And uh, what we have is the ground plane is really the, uh, basically the, the uh, housing or the channel that holds the uh, suspended line. So in my other videos, you can check them and see the theory behind suspended lines, but I'm gonna just go ahead and talk a little bit on, um, suspended line right now. So this is a little um, definition of suspended strip lines right here. I'll give you a minute to read it. So what are suspended uh, strip lines? Well, here they are. Basically what we have, we have a copper crease with a certain width, okay? That is printed on a substrate of a certain height, H, with no ground plane, just suspended in air, okay? And then the whole thing is uh, uh, basically, um, the whole thing is, cover, is, is housed inside a, um, a metal channel um, thing that, that basically um, is illustrated in here with uh, similar to like a waveguide uh, structure uh, that has a width of A and a height of B, okay? So the 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 uh, the medium in here is air, as you can see, epsilon zero, epsilon zero, and this is epsilon R, which is the, the electric material in here. And in here on both sides, we have, we need something to common the top ground with the bottom ground. Okay, because it's uh, we don't want it to be isolated by the metal. So we have a bunch of vias that are uh, printed on the line, okay? So suspended uh, strip line is basically a modified from a strip line. The, the uh, strip line is a signal line of a conductor in the center of a direct substrate, as you can see, and so forth and so forth, okay? so. Let's go further. Before we talk about the filters that I'm going to cover today, um, basically, I have a three um, models, model filters, okay? This is a substrate in here, which has a bunch of, this is not an interdigital or a hairpin microstrip filter, although it does have some similarities. This is a, 
a suspended capacitively coupled uh, uh, transmission line filter, okay, where we have a set of resonators on top, and then we have a, a substrate, and at the bottom, we have another set of resonators. We feed the signal on top ones, okay, and the distance from the, uh, the, the these things, basically, they are shorted on one side of the box, okay, uh, and then so there is a sh these are shorted on here, and these are shorted on here. Uh, I mean, the, right now, the housing for this particular filter is not shown. So I'm going to show it in a minute. Okay. Shield, let's put that on. Okay, so you can see here, what we have is the metal in here is touching on this side is touching the side of the box okay ideally what we want to do is we want to create a bunch of vias in there but for this uh, ideal case it does work and then the, the other resonators on the bottom are also touching the um the side of the box on here and what you end up with is uh, these resonators are on top of each other with an overlapped area in here Okay, this overlap creates a, uh, a capacitor. Okay, and this capacitor is really what need uh, what what plays the biggest role in the uh, filtering process. The other filter I'm going to talk about is similar, same as here. So here it is. We have this, and let me just put the um, the shield on so we can see it. You. Okay, so basically this one here, I included two um, coaxial cable sword, um, or, or in this case, connectors, the equivalent of a connector, a coaxial, an SMA connector on both sides. So basically what we have, similar to the other case where we have, these are the resonators, okay, they're suspended, okay, and on one side they're grounded, while on the other side, it's open. But on the bottom, if you look at this, we have another set of resonators that are shorted on the other side, the opposite side. And then both basically overlap with this region in here. And that region, like I said, plays a big role in the, um, in, in the filtering process. So I'm gonna go in more details in a minute, but let's just show that. Now, <clears throat> The other filter I'm gonna show, you can go in and actually do more and more stack, more and more resonators. Like this one here, for instance, is, is one where the we've got on top, we have these resonators shorted on one side, open another side, and then we have a middle layer. Okay, uh, uh, this is a three layer board. Okay, the middle layer we have uh, resonators that are also shorted on this side. Then on the bottom, we have a third layer of resonators. So basically, this is a three a, a three stacked resonators on top of each other. And the shield in here, let me just show that as well, because the shield plays a, uh, an important role in the suspended line. It's part of the, it's a waveguide, basically. It's really a uh, so it needs to be there, otherwise it wouldn't work. Because first of all, that's what that's what commons the top and bottom, and that's what contains the radiations from this. Okay, and then of course at the beginning I do have a little illustration. This was covered in the uh, waveguide to um, strip line or micro strip line transitions. What this is is a comparison between. Um, the um, the 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 uh, performance of uh, three medium uh, signal uh, four signals, and in this case, in here, I have a micro strip line, okay, same length, and then I have a suspended line, same impedance, fifty ohm, and the first thing that comes to your attention is that suspended lines 
to get the same impedance, a characteristic impedance from a, uh, a suspended line that you would get from a microstrip line, you always have much wider line. And that's one of the key features of suspended lines is the fact that you always, for the same impedance, you end up with a line that is much wider than a microstrip line. So that alleviates a lot of the limitations that you would get, for instance, when you trying to implement um, high impedance lines, okay? You get, if you wanna go like say, for instance, on these typical Doroid uh, boards, if you wanna go above more than say 80 ohms um, to like 150 ohms, you, end up, you start getting down uh, with uh, lines that are so tiny, like one or two or few mils of width, which obviously, Manufacturing, you can't manufacture and hold the tolerances on that. Where for the same impedance, using suspended lines, you end up with a line that is say 10 mil, you know, that you would, that would be similar to like a few mils uh, using microstrip line. So that's one of the benefits. Plus you get lower losses. As you know, you, the, the larger copper area you have, the wider is the less losses you have. Okay, and radiations, you do get more radiations, but that's what the uh, purpose of the channel, which is the metal channel, that is part of the suspended line is, is the whole. And, and now this is not like fabricating a waveguide because what this is basically, you've got a board, so you do this line in there and all you need to do is on the bottom, aluminum that sits behind uh, the, uh, in the bottom, uh, of the board, you make a groove in the aluminum uh, to get the uh, to get the clearance and make the cavity underneath it. And on top, you, you just basically utilize the cover lid of the uh, shield of, on the board. Okay, so these here, and this is a waveguide, of course. Now, if you look at the, uh, the just to show you why is the uh, the the and we did show this earlier in in the um, do, during the videos that you can go back to of the uh, waveguide to transmission line um, things and uh, uh, transitions. And the key to it is that, for instance, in when you're when you're dealing in a, uh, a microstrip line, you can see that the field is really distributed uh, largely in the uh, substrate, okay? And a little bit in the copper and then on top in the air in here. And nothing of course leaks to the bottom because you have a ground plane, okay? Where for, um, for, um, for suspended lines that you can see in here, very little E-field is distributed in the substrate and therefore avoiding the um, tangent loss of the substrate and avoiding a whole other tons of load of problems, like problems associated with temperature changes that affect the substrate, the electric constant um, uh, parameter. Uh, tolerance is due to manufacturing from board to board, lot to lot in terms of the uh, permittivity, okay? So, we stop this and let's go back to the theory. We'll come back to these, but let's just cover a little bit on these filters. Now, for, of course, I'm not really going to cover the um, filter the, uh, synthesis part because uh, there are lots of books and softwares that have these in there. But basically, to design a filter, you start with a um, you start with a um, given frequency skirt shave and and losses and bent widths and rejection parameters, input and output return loss, and you end up with a, a bunch of parameters. And then you choose a filter topology, and then um, you end up with another set of parameters for, and then you have to transform those onto resonators with the physical dimensions. And, and uh, uh, let's just show right now, and, and that part of it I'm not covering, okay? I'm assuming that you have a filter and now you're just wanting to 
uh, physically um, um, realize that filter in printed uh, in uh, printed circuit board technology. So I just grabbed a few boards, RF, RF and microwave boards from the open literature. And I just want to go through with a little bit of, uh, of these, discuss some of these. And this is not meant to criticize those designers. Great people have designed this stuff. Some of these boards are from people that opened uh, um, key site test equipments. Um, uh, so we're not here to determine whether they're bad or good. It's just uh, for illustration. So, and this board that I grabbed, these are two boards, the one on top, and there's a little piece here and a little one here. You can see different uh, varieties of, of RF and microwave filters. And these are printed filters. I'm not talking about the um, lumped element filters. Like for instance, this one here is a hairpin filter. Okay, and then this one here is open stub, parallel, open stub, double stub uh, filter. This one is radial stub filtering. This one is a hairpin. This one is also stops. This is stops. This is interdigital, where you basically uh, alternate the grounded resonators, like this case here. And uh, this one is 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 a radial stub filter. So these filters in here, when you look at them, due to manufacturing tolerances, okay, as you can see here, the the gap between these these resonators, these resonators in here, the tolerances on these thin, fine, thin, high impedance lines in here, okay, and in here, these play a big role in the um, performance of these filters in terms of trying to maintain repeatability of performance. Uh, and, uh, on top of this, add the variations of manufacturing properties on this materials in here. This material from lot to lot, and then the environmental conditions that the um, thing operate in also plays a role, temperature, humidity, uh, um, things like that. So all of this plays a big role. And, and in addition to this is really the size. You can see this is a sizable board. You know, you're talking about um, probably from this distance to this distance is somewhere on the order of six inches. So these are large filters, okay? Now let's go and see more of these filters. Oh. Here is a... Um, a KU band down converter on this side here. Here are these two filters, and these are basically, we did cover these in the waveguide to microstrip transitions, uh, where you got, these are dual vertical and horizontal channels that are being picked up with these pins that are soldered to the waveguide behind. And we go through LNA is here, LNA is here, and then there's a hairpin filter in here. And again, you can see the hairpin filter in here, just the deposits of the copper itself. Look how critical the, 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 the gap between those resonators, which plays a, a role in the, in the coupling, okay, the data coupling between the resonators, which, which affects the bandwidth, the ripple, the insertion loss. And you can see, it's, so now, the, why I'm focusing on this is because when you go to suspended lines, you end up with filters topology that are really large widths. So therefore you don't end up with a case with a situation where you're trying to hold very tight tolerances on gaps and line widths. Same thing on this here, this, this is um, an edge coupled filter in here. You can see that this filter, how critical the gaps in here are. Okay, and the uh, stops that are here. Same thing in here. Um, okay, I could see here that this thing in here, this this is a, an interesting uh, KU band down converter because it uses a, an RF ASIC from Rafael. A lot of you probably have seen this, some of you. This is an inter fully integrated um, uh, down converter, okay, where this one here is implemented discreetly. This is an older generation, okay? So again, as you can see here, all these tight tolerances on the gaps and on the 
high impedance lines. These are really so annoying issues for designers at these frequencies, and they become more and more at milliband frequencies. Okay. Now, in this case, in here, look at these guys in here. We've got a, an interdigital filter in here, an interdigital filter in here. You can see that these resonators that are grounded with just a single via on each side of these. Now, the equivalent uh, equivalency of this via at out of frequencies that plays a lot of um, uh, role in the performance. Um, so, and uh, people who have designed these a lot of times, they end up tuning these at the at the prototype beginning stages with an exacto knife, just because it's trying to tune these, because a lot of these filters were designed probably in the, some of these filters are designed back in the 90s and early 2000s. Not a lot of people had the luxury of having access to 3D modeling uh, packages like we have right now using HFSS, RF Pro, Momentum, uh, and the other uh, packages. Um, again, here's another set of filters in here. These look like they're switched filters because you can go either this way, this way, this way. And this is uh, basically a combines the output. Okay, so you you switch. This is this must be three way switches or two way switches in here. And this is probably a part of a, a wide band receiver. I think this board is for a, from a a vector um, network analyzer board, if I'm not mistaken. You can see a synthesizer in here with probably ZCOM VCO in here. That's for the down conversion. Here's another filter. You can see how these thin lines in here, those are preferably, we would want to avoid using these because they are highly impacted with temperature variations of the substrate and the tolerances, mechanical tolerances, and then in the fabrication uh, tolerances as well. Because um, as you know, from BCB house to another house, you end up with different processes and you could end up with a lot of issues on these, okay? Now, same thing on this board, these filters more. I'm just, uh, I just went crazy just collecting these things. Uh, these are very interesting boards to look at a lot of times. And um, so again, these are the um, hairpin filters. These are all microstrip filters, okay? So on to another filter in a KU band. Uh, down converter. So now let's shift over and show you. I just grabbed these uh, few of the uh, of of suspended strip line filters, and here they are. These are bad pass filters. Okay, and as you can see, the 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 patterns, the artwork look weird, but it's just basically resonators. It's a bunch of resonators that you chain together to make a a filter. And uh, uh, basically, um, from what you can see in here, you don't see a, a whole lot of critical narrow band or gaps or, or lines that are, uh, and then most of the line widths are large. Uh, as you can see in here, if you look at the SMA solid input, you can see how wide that line is. So that line with this width now, when you're talking tolerances of say plus minus, you know, one mil, that's not much considering that your line, for instance, is 30 mils or 40 mils. And this is this is not the case would be if you implemented this in microstrip where the lines are very tiny. You know, you might end up with a line like that. You might need to be at somewhere around eight, nine mils at most, probably 15 mils, where it becomes very critical. More of this filter. So, and here is a this filter in particular here. This is very much one of the ones that I have implemented in the HFSS. And that's the, basically, if you look back here, uh, that's basically, um, let me close this guy because we're done with that guy. Okay, that's similar to this one. Well, this one is a three, uh, stack one. Oh yeah, this one here. So you've got basically 
a set of resonators on both top and bottom. The top is fed with the input and output, direct couple, and the grounding of these resonators are on the opposite sides for the top and bottom. And you can see how wide they are, okay? You can see that these are wide lines relatively. So, and that's what you see on here, basically. This is really how this filter look like in suspended form. Now, um, there is tons of, uh, of, of materials that you can uh, review on this theory of suspended uh, to, uh, strip line, resonators and filters and lines. Uh, but one particular um, interesting article that I always found really nice one uh, to start with, and that's basically where my implementation of those filters uh, used. Uh, there is, is two articles. One of them in particular is this one by, uh, by Rick uh, Sturdivant. And this is from Hughes Aircraft Company in California. And this was published back in the, in the Microwave Journal, the great people of the Microwave Journal, back in 1993, okay? And it does show at the time, of course, it was just starting technology, but now it's very matured, uh, but it's nice to look back and just show you some of the, um, most important stuff findings back then is that, for instance, you have, <clears throat> you have, here is the, uh, the, <clears throat> here is the uh, structure of the suspended line, okay? And in this case, uh, the, the art, the, the uh, author have used, or the researcher have used a board which is five mil thick with epsilon R 2.2. This look like a duroid board, okay, so uh, from Rogers. So the thing that, uh, the, what you start with first is you design the channel, which is the how high and how large your channel that is gonna host, that's gonna house the, the suspended line design and usually, you know, that this acts like a waveguide. So you need to make sure that the 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 all of your suspended line frequency operations is below the cutoff of this channel because you obviously want your signal to propagate through the suspended line and not excite a, a waveguide, rectangular waveguide mode. So and that the the cutoff frequency is given in here, and it's a function of the substrate of the, the height of the substrate, and then the B dimension and A dimension, which is the A dimension and B dimensions, as you can see, very similar to the rectangular waveguide. And of course, we've got this term in here. So this is easily can be a starting point to design this. And then he showed us in here, the line of the line impedance for this particular structure that is here, 35 mil height with 90 mil width, and a duroid with five mil thick, uh, he showed the line impedance versus the uh, line width. And you can see here that as soon as you look at this, you can see that to get to high impedances, you still uh, at a, a reasonably uh, good width of a line that you're not impacted highly by manufacturing limitations. So for instance, first of all, for a 50 ohm line, okay, you end up with a with a line that is 45 mils. That's wide relatively, relative to typically a 50 ohm line from a, a microstrip line. In fact, I did the calculations in here. For 50 ohm suspended line, your dimension is 45 mils. While if you were using this substrate with a ground uh, layer on the bottom, meaning it's a microstrip line, it would be 16 mils, okay? Now for 120 ohm, okay, that, that's a high impedance line. Uh, with, with, uh, with this one here, with this uh, suspended line, you end up with 10 mils, where in microstrip lines, you end up with three mils. Now three mils is almost impossible to fabricate um, on these boards. So a lot of houses will not probably may want it to be up in the 
five, six, seven mils at, at, at minimum, okay? So you can see that there is an advantage to this. So another condition on this channel here that uh, that uh, houses the suspended line is that the height has to be smaller than a quarter wavelength uh, at the uh, maximum operating frequency. And that again has to do with the uh, making sure that uh, you're below the cutoff. So let's get right into the filters that we're gonna demo in the 3D model modeling tool from HFSS. Uh, so here is uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the double um, uh, laid out resonators using suspended lines. So we have a dielectric layer in here shown in the green layer in here. And we have one metal in here, one trace that is a half wave length, another one in the bottom, okay? And then we have an overlapped area between them. And this is basic, if you look at this, now at the end in here, there's a coupling capacitance, the fringe and capacitance at the, at the edge, which is represented in this model here. And there's also another capacitance in here. Of course, this metal, this metal here is touching this box, and this metal here is touching this side of a box, and the box up on top is, is really uh, sorted with via, vias or sandwiched uh, onto uh, vias that come the top and bottom. So that's grounded in this case like this. And now in the 3D model, it would look like this when you draw it. When you fab it, it's like this as the top side. Now you could also use for even getting a higher cube uh, from this structure, you can go three levels. You can stack one resonator here, shorted at this point, another one here, shorted at this point, and then a third one in the bottom, shorted at this point, okay? So now this one here becomes really a strip line um, resonator, okay? And the to model this, really the modeling is again, this is shorted, okay? While this one here has got a capacitor on this side. And of course, in the middle, there is the line, okay? And same thing for all three ones. Uh, like on the bottom one, you get the capacitance in here. Here it is, okay? And this is grounded on this side. And then at this end, you get a capacitor from here and capacitor from here. And then uh, top and bottom are, are grounded, okay? So I picked, without going through the details, just for to make the video short and reasonable. We uh I went ahead and 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 implemented three filters using this technology that we will be seeing in a minute. In the um, this is one here, which is made of four resonators up on top, and this one is at 2100 megahertz. Okay, the frequency, the center band. Where another one I made this one here, which is 1800 megahertz. Same thing, okay. Now this one here, of course, I added a, a coaxial a connector on both ends or a model of a coaxial connector. This one here is a higher order and it uses the three level. As you can see here, there are three levels of resonators. There's middle and top and bottom, okay? And so, and, and of course in here, the feed is really to the, to the middle one, to the middle, the middle layer is what's fed on this side. And in this case, I excited this with a wave port on this side of the enclosure, okay? And in real life, uh, you would need, you could, obviously you can't get a connector to connect directly to the middle layer. So you need, uh, an additional transition from the middle layer to the top or to the bottom, either way. So you're going from a strip line to a, um, a suspended line on the bottom or suspended line on top, either case. Just basically punch a via and then go to either side. And of course these are, usually these filters are used um, up to like S-band, so they're not really, um, you they're much easier to, to design because they're not really intended for use uh, up in the uh, millimeters or uh, KU band or 
maybe just from C band downward to like say UHF. Uh, I've seen them implemented at uh, a lot of times. Uh, basically, all these filters, what you want to use them for, like for instance, in this case, in here, if you look at the performance, you'll realize why these filters are good. In fact, when you look at the frequency response, this is not optimized yet, but it, just to show you the first shot at this. Uh, for the first moment when you see the frequency response, you would think that this is actually a cavity resonator filter, large, huge, bulky, uh, because the Q is pretty significant and you can get between a rejection at 100 dB and the edge of the band, you can easily meet that with just 10%, okay? And that's unheard of using microstrip or lumped elements. To do this in lumped elements, you would need a filter that is maybe 10 times the size of this filter. So, and that's why these filters, that's why I pick these filters because they're really good filters in performance uh, and, and they're not, widely uh, used. And so these are really for like front end of um, receivers to reject nearby interferences and for IF intermediate frequency filtering. These are very good filters, okay? Now let's get back and summarize. So what we just mentioned in the overall scope of of filters that are implemented as a suspended strip line resonators. First of all, like I mentioned, manufacturing advantages where you basically, um, um, the manufacturing limitations on high impedance lines and nutty gaps is not really an issue with this technology, okay? And there are of course lower losses, higher Q, like we have shown just because of the lines are wider, the, there is no radiation losses, the, the radiation is all contained within the channel. Um, and of course, the, 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 the most significant one is that the E field propagates in air almost totally, not in the substrate. So you end up with much higher Q than you would get like a, a microstrip line or step line. The other issue is the dependency on substrate, the, the filter dependent, the filter performance dependency on substrate height, uh, height or, or dielectric permittivity tolerances is not really an issue in this case, because uh, basically from the substrate, if there's variation, say with say like 5% tolerances on the direct constant, um, it's not a big deal for these filters because the, the dimensions of the filter are lightly determined by the director constant, okay? Because obviously because the signal is almost totally propagating in air, not in the director uh, layer. The dependency on substrate temperature variation is not an issue also because uh, as you know, with typical filters, when we design a filter, it's nice, but then when we go in and recycle it in the, um, a temperature chamber, it, it might fail and you end up with uh, having to do a lot of um, safety uh, <clears throat> extension of the bandwidth to so that you pass the frequency re uh, rejection requirements. And that's a lot of work, okay? <clears throat> and especially if this filter was implemented the lumped elements. You know, with lumped elements, you end up with a bunch of inductors and ceramic capacitors, and um, there's a lot of dependencies on temperature and manufacturing tolerances, okay? Now, uh, strip line, uh, suspended strip line filters um, have higher manufacturing re repeatability, and that's because obviously they're not depend, they're, they're not, uh, strongly dependent on uh, the substrate uh, variations, okay? And of course, the lines are wide, so it becomes that toler tight tolerances on, on, on uh, fabrication is not an issue. And then suspended uh, <clears throat> strip lines uh, are shielded basically, because the shield is, the channel shielding is, is part of the, it's, uh, the, it is really a waveguide. There's a groove and, cover on top. 
So no radiation issues. <clears throat> and then a smaller size, of course, because to get the same uh, uh, rejection or roll off, the steep roll off you would get from these filters, what you get will say a few inches on here, you would need 10 inches of size board to get it if you're implementing these filters in lumped elements, okay? Um, and to say the least, if you're uh, if, if they are in uh, in in microstrip lines. So what I showed in here, of course, look at this. I mean, this is what you would usually. Uh, this is what you end up with with lumped elements. Okay, you can see all these inductors and capacitors, and there's a lot of uh, tolerances and manufacturing issues and uh, repeatability issues with this, and temperature variations as well. And in macro strip lines, of course, you know, you end up with these little gaps that are very tightly, um, uh, sometimes uncontrollable, and you end up with issues. Uh, same thing for the edge coupled capacitors. All right, so just a little commercial. Now, um, before we, we go to the 3D modeling, uh, like I uh, always said, my name is Dr. Mohammed Nizami, and uh, I'm an independent contractor, out of a microwave designer. If you happen to have a need for any filtering like this, uh, let me know. Um, I'll work with you on a design. I will turn in the design for you, uh, the PCB board, and um, uh, of course, the mechanical um, structure that you would want to house this board in. That's your part. You just basically send me the outline of the board and then uh, we could work together on a filter like this my rates consulting rates are very reasonable and um, i'm very accessible and um, i have a good track record of design experience for many years back in the united states and uh, so let me know if you need any help i'd be glad to help you Okay, so let's go to, um, yeah, before we get to that, let's just look, uh, this is the paper that I showed you, the, the macro paper. And uh, at the end of this paper here back then, of course, people, like I said, they didn't have 3D modeling. So they ended up writing their own code and uh, the code is here and I looked at it and uh, did it in MATLAB. So you would want to convert this code to MATLAB to be able to come up with the dimensions and the um, of of this uh, of of these resin errors for uh, for a particular design that you have. This article is very uh, simple to use and very clearly written. Another uh, article that I stumbled on. This gentleman here. These guys have almost exclusively worked on the uh, capacitively coupled uh, resin error suspended line filtering. Uh, and they have used, uh, uh, you can refer back to their paper. You know, they even showed how good this is when you can push the, the second um, uh, sp spurious uh, resin error response of the filter that really, usually if you have a ceramic filter, that's a big issue because you get hit by that and you still have to reject that. Uh, where this one here, you go eight times the center frequency, and you still haven't got to that. So they do, you know, they treat this and uh, it's pretty good uh, a treatment. And you can uh, see that you can, uh, you know, get like uh, 100 dB, no, 50 dB in this case, rejection uh, knockdown at the, uh, in, in in just 11% at center frequency of 500 megahertz for, for this particular design. Okay, so let's see live um, some of these filters. So the first one that we're gonna look at is this one here. This one is, oh no, let's start with the two resonator ones since this is not. So let's start with this, okay. And this filter here, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the frequency response is giving here, and you can see that this filter from M7, which is at 1.880 gigahertz, this is at uh, the center frequency is, uh, is 7 to 1800 megahertz in this case, okay? Um, is almost from, from 
from uh, 80 dB down, just in say uh, M7 is 1.88 and M8 is 2.57. So that's about 30% or so, if I'm not mistaken, you can calculate that. So very steep response. The right now it's not fully uh, the the it's not fully optimized, so the return loss is not as good. But uh, now this filter, of course, is is really parameterized. So I could go in, and these are the widths, basically and the height, and you can go in here and start doing if you want optimization in here, or you make tuning, and you can actually uh, tweak this so you can get a better performance. Let's look at the uh, E field on this. Here is the E field distribution and let's animate this. And you can see this is a center of the band. The filter acts like this. So basically you end up with the, the, the signal couples capacitively through the both resonators, of course, this side, the top ones are open on this side, while the bottom ones, they are open on the other side. Okay, so you end up with this. A pretty good filter um, for the, the performance that you get from this filter is astonishingly uh, uh, impressive, considering that it's only um, for resonators. And that has to do with the fact that you have a very high Q. Now I took this filter and uh, again, I ran it at another frequency and included a, uh, an SMA connector in here. And this is basically, um, let's see, we've got the, uh, just show the excitation on this. You can see that I excited the waveport on this end of the coax here, connector, where the other one, let's see, the, the uh, this is the excitation, okay? So, and uh, just to show you again, this filter, this filter is like I said, the right now I didn't model the soldering, but there would be soldering here. This is touching right now, okay? And this, probably this affects the return loss. So we need to do soldering because you get more cross section of contact. In this case, really, it's only contacting a little tiny area of the center conductor of the coaxial connector, okay? So this filter in here, the response of this filter, just so that we can look at this, is pretty impressive, okay, at 2100 megahertz. Okay, you can see that from M1, 2.3 to M4, 3.4 gigahertz, which is 80 dB down, okay? And that's very good. Okay, now I just... All right, so let's go to the uh, now triple stacked one, which is this filter in here. Now again, this filter in here, the way it's excited with wave ports on the inside of this lid, the side lid, okay? And the wave port comes in and feeds the middle resonator that's connected through this line in here, okay? And this filter has much higher Q, of course. As you can see, it's pretty impressive. Uh, you're getting to like, say, uh, uh, let me reduce the, we don't need to go this much, just go to say 100 dB down. Okay, so we're going from M4 to, let me lose the uh, marker. The M1, M1 is a two point, uh, it's a one gigahertz. Okay, and M2 is a 1.27, okay? So only that much away and you're down 100 dB down. That's pretty impressive, very impressive. So um, that's very impressive considering that, um, you know, let's zoom in. Uh, let's see. Let's look between say a half and two to, okay, 
And you can see that the response is pretty good. Okay. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Dr. Mohammed Nizami with another video just showing you the benefits of implementing RF and microwave filters using suspended line uh, technology. Um, like you, you have seen, um, there is a lot of advantages to using this. And nowadays with the tight requirements that we have on a lot of these radios, uh, these can be very uh, beneficial at uh, anywhere from uh, VHF to say uh, C band. These filters are, are, are can be a very lucrative uh, topology to follow. Okay, let me know if you have any. Uh, uh, if you need any help in designing, I mean, uh, like I said, uh, um, in fact, I do have one client right now that I'm working with closely um, to to deliver one of these filters to them. So we could, I, I have a very rapid um, way of delivering designs. Uh, we get you all the uh, simulations first. We, we work on the requirements first, nail that down. And once we get that, we get the uh, modeling uh, using, first of all, the filter topology using ADS and other filter um, um, so, uh, synthesis tools. And then I get to the 3D modeling, of course, that, that, that also gets you uh, another degree of certainty uh, on, on the correct design. And then I work with you on the fab as well. So then if you need me to be present at the uh, in the lab to help you with the testing these, I could fly occasionally to Europe and the United States anywhere or the in our region over here in the Middle East. So let me know if you have any uh, requirements for filtering that are tight like uh, scenarios I've just showed. Again, thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.